Welcome to our YouTube channel. We're so glad that you found us. This month's satsang is with Reverend Karen Worth, a member and minister of Awakening Together. For more information on our non-dual community and the free resources that we provide, we invite you to visit our website, awakening-together.org. We hope that you enjoy the satsang, and we also hope to see you live in the sanctuary sometime in the near future. For more information on how to do that, please visit our website. Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. We are here for the Awakening Together Satsang, as Sina said, and we are going to be interviewing the wonderful Karen Worth, or Reverend Karen Worth, as she's been through the MPP program here. Um, I'll begin by introducing her. Uh, hi, Karen, and, and also uh, having her share uh, any part of her story that she's interested in sharing, and then having um, some time for questions uh, from you all as well. I'll be asking her some questions as well. Um, so before we begin, just thought to take a, just a few moments and eyes open or eyes closed and gently notice what's here all the time never changing it's relaxing if we need to just relax our body a little if we want to we don't have to everything is optional just notice this natural recognition of the true self and it will help us listen in every instant to what is most helpful thank you so Karen, Karen came to an understanding at, the, at her mailbox in 2006. Uh, as the Course says, the wish to see calls down the grace of God upon your eyes and brings the gift of light that makes sight possible. That's in A Course in Miracles in chapter 25. And so grace stepped in for Karen and she clearly understood for the first time that the mind would, would be her demise if she didn't change something. And this started the journey of surrendering to the truth. She started working with the subconscious mind first through center point holosync or holosync meditation, and then working with the conscious mind through Vipassana meditations, A Course in Miracles, and eventually through self-inquiry. Uh, during this time, she also listened to gurus and teachers. This is when she met Regina at a local Course in Miracles meeting. And Regina led her to ACIM Gather, another uh, uh, sanctuary situation like Awakening Together, if you haven't heard of them. Uh, she also went through the CMC Ministerial Program, the Awakening Together Minister Preparation Program, she uh, connected with the teachings of Ramana Maharshi, the Indian sage, as well as Michael Langford and the AHAM Meditation Retreat Center in Asheboro, North Carolina. In 2018, Karen had been working with a Rupert Spira meditation on existence for a few weeks. She'd been working for a few weeks with that, and she wasn't going to move on what uh, she said she wasn't going to move on until she really got what Rupert was talking about. On a walk, she asked the question to her mind, if I'm not the body, then what exists? And then everything stopped and turned inward as the mind struggled to answer and eventually gave up. Then Grace took the next step. Having given up the search for the answer, the mind surrendered into the knowing it didn't exist as an entity. There was only existence. And the revelation of Moses's I am that I am was revealed. So gorgeous. Thank you, Karen. I love that. I love that story. So please carry on with this. I would love for you to share any helpful aspects of your story as Karen and the impulse or that desire that arose in you for this quest. Thank you. Wow. Well, thank you, Laura, for for saying saying all that. And 
I I feel like crying because of my um, just love for the grace that stepped in and uh, and just knowing it's there for all of us. It's the same within each of us. It just makes me want to, I don't know, bend down and um, just kiss grace all over. <laughs> uh, wow, it's beautiful. Uh, so I don't know. Um, I don't know what, where to start. What, what 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 should I say? I don't know. I'm here only to be truly helpful. <laughs> Would you like me to ask another question? Yeah, maybe that'll help me. <laughs> okay. um, so when we talked yesterday, you mentioned uh, self-inquiry is uh, your primary or one of your primary tools presently. Um, and we're going to explore that in a little bit. Um, but you also shared a few other tools, uh, some of which were mentioned just now in your introduction. And could you speak a little bit about those and specifically address your prior interest in astrology to support beings to realize the script and the choice to ease, ease our way, so to speak? Okay, yeah. Um, you know, it was really weird at the mailbox. Um, I just... I like all of a sudden I realized I had to do something with the mind. Like this was not going to work out for me, this mind. And um, I came across the movie. Um, I think it was the secret and behind the secret, there was interviews with a lot of people. And the interview that clicked with me was um, Bill Harris, who was part of center point who came up with um, and designed the Holosync uh, meditation. And so that's where I started. Um, just, I thought, well, if I, if I could get the unconscious mind, you know, under control, maybe uh, I could work then with the conscious mind and it was an easy process. So it didn't require me being able to meditate because I had never meditated before. It was like completely new to me. And it was weird that I even wanted to do it, but um, it just so happened that's what happened. So <laughs> it was weird to Karen. She's like, this is weird. What are you doing? <laughs> so um, and then I got into the Course in Miracles and it was um, I had seen the book, heard about the book. And then someone I brought it up to someone and they're like, oh, you don't want to read that book. It's not for you. And of course, that's why I started to read it you know, that pride from, you know, your friend going, it's not for you. And that authority problem, like, yes, it is. <laughs> so I started reading The Course in Miracles and, oh my God, I absolutely loved it. And so then as part of the um, Holosync, you can add in your own voice and record your own message that you want to give to your subconscious. And so I started reading, um, to my subconscious mind principles from the course of miracles. And so that's what I was programming the unconscious mind with was the principles from that. And um, then after I got, you know, doing that for a while, I thought, well, you know, I really could start working with the conscious mind now that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm okay with this unconscious part. I'm uh, it's okay. I can go on to the conscious mind. So that's when um, I started going to the Vipassana meditation um i would do it once a year a 10-day class and you you're in silence i absolutely loved that um and then i think that's when um i started to do the mpp program um and I loved the MPP program. I thought it had taught me how to do self-inquiry, but I hadn't surrendered enough to actually learn how to do self-inquiry through the MPP program. So Regina got me um, involved. She kind of, she went to Aham to visit, visit Ganeshan, which is Ramana Maharshi's grand, grand nephew, I think. And, um, she told me about it and I went and it was through their program. They have um, a 10 day program called the um, intensive self-inquiry where I 
And it is, I first went, I, I thought I was going to just get a nice quiet time, you know, for 10 days where I could meditate. And <laughs> it turns out intensive was one of the big parts of that. It was very intensive. And I went there not knowing that I was going to come out of there with a deeper and uh, knowledge of how to do self-inquiry. It, it, it changed my life that method that they taught me. And the cool thing about that 10-day class is you practice with them and they take you through all different um, ways to get in because, you know, the mind is very tricky and it wants to make you think, oh, I already know this. And that's how my mind was going into it. Oh, I already know this. So it took a lot of different ways of looking at it for for the surrender to occur, to allow me to take it in and learn it, the practice. Yeah, so... <laughs> I'm just going to take a minute here for a second. I'm just going to enjoy looking at everybody for a second. It's <laughs> beautiful. Uh, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Another question that comes into just with tools is you spoke about honesty being crucial, self honesty. Yeah. Honesty is so crucial, right? I mean, don't we, if we're not honest with ourselves, like whenever I give people advice about going uh, to take the ICIT program, I'm like, you know, be really honest with yourself when you go there. Go there with a willingness to leave everything on the table. You're not bringing anything home with you. And that takes honesty because the mind wants to, you know, you're you're in there and you're learning kind of new techniques and stuff. And the mind wants to, well, it's afraid, right? Mind's always afraid that it's going to be seen as, you know, you know, not knowing it or um, not wanting to look there. And so to go with a, it's kind of, it's, it is like a surrendering into I really want to know the answer to who I am. I'm no longer willing to pretend I know the answer to what I am, to believe some idea in the mind, you know. It's like so important to just be honest. And you know what? The only one not being honest is the mind. It's not you, the truth of what you are. It's just the mind. It's scared. And so to allow it to be scared, but also allow it to, you know what? This will be good for you too. Come on. <laughs> yeah, honesty. It's and integrity, you know, to have the integrity to be honest. Yeah. Mm. With uh with my practice, um, I'm gonna go to the word accountability because um I needed a lot of accountability growing up um through this process and um Awakening together has helped me tremendously with my accountability, and I'm so grateful that um, Awakening Together is there to help us all with our accountability. And for me, the accountability came when I decided I had I had a knowing that I needed to do the um, the workbook lessons because I had never done them, and you know Jesus has been telling me, you know, you need to do them. And so I decided I would do them. And how I did them is in a meditative state. I would go into a meditation um, and then I would read the lesson and then I'd go quiet and I would start asking questions about the lesson. And as I got um, an understanding of the lesson, because I had honestly asked, I had asked with the um, surrendering attitude. And because I did surrender into not knowing, I was given some information. And as I got information back, that's what I would record on my little recorder. <laughs> and then I would transcribe it for myself. And then I would record it so I could listen to it. And then I offered that to Awakening Together and they they wanted it. So then I had someone now who I was accountable to, which, you know, sucked for Karen because she didn't like accountability, but it really was great. 
Mm-hmm. So I just and and I I encourage anybody to use awakening together in that way. You know, provide something for you that helps you on your journey, but also right can help other people on their journey so that it's not about, you know, I'm giving of myself and not getting anything really back. It's really about you. I mean, this is about us, our journey, my journey, your journey. It's all about that. And so, yeah. And, and use, use awakening together to find help and staying accountable if you need it, like I did. So, yeah, I'm just great. So grateful for this community and, and Regina for, leading me along the way and you know how you look back on things that happened in your life and you're like oh now i can see how that script was unfolding and stuff but i couldn't see it then because you know and now you know the mind thinks it knows but it really doesn't know but you know i don't know what anything is for (laughs) so i've been rambling sorry Oh, it's glorious. It is not rambling in my book at all. Um, it reminds me of uh, <clears throat> the teachings of the inner Ramana that came through Regina, where Ramana was talking about um, the love of discipline and explained why we actually love discipline. Another word for that accountability, you know, because what we're really awakening into you know, is like you actually really want to be disciplined because the results are going to be glorious, you know, I'm paraphrasing. But uh, if anyone, so Karen's, if for those who might not know, Karen's meditations of the Course in Miracles lessons are available on the Awakening Together website. And uh, Awakening Together itself has this ex- astounding repository of tools for us, uh, most of which are free. And then, of course, the retreats, they have to make some a living to, to keep us operating. But um, yeah, perfect, perfect. Um, so you mentioned the script again. So let's let's see if share a little bit more about the script and then Regina's parallel teaching of the code and how you came to to discover uh, how it was revealed to you and then how you have supported some people to see that through uh, astrology. It, it, and I only mention astrology because it was an like an interest, a passing interest or a interest of some in some capacity for you so that the Holy Spirit used what you were already interested in for revealing um, and supporting. Um, so it's not like we have to go out and throw away every, I mean, we, in some capacity, <laughs> we might do that, but it will use what we give it to work with and repurpose it or reinterpret it for us in an extraordinarily helpful way. Cool. Thank you for that question. That is a cool question. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I was always really um, intrigued and loved the teaching of Regina's on the code. And it's been a few years since I've listened to that message, but that message has always been with me. Like there's all, it's always been something with me about that message. And um. Once I um, kind of came to the understanding that, you know, this identity I always thought I was doesn't really exist and it's not even there, I started to ask questions about, well, you know, I, I've seen this script because I'm I'm aware of it and it's, it is going on. And I just wanted to know, you know, I kept hearing this script is written. And then finally, one day I was like, I was ready to surrender into that question. You know, you can ask questions and if you haven't surrendered into, you know, getting the answer to it, like surrendering the mind to even trying to figure it out um, until you really surrender into a question, you're probably not going to get an answer too quick because you really need to be willing to receive an answer to get an answer. (laughs) So um, I finally, I guess, I surrendered to that question and I asked, you know, well, if it's written, where is it written? And um, I just I just asked it and I let it I let it alone. I just that's what I do. I'll ask a question and like kind of walk away. And if 
I'm mature enough to get an answer, I will. And if I'm not mature enough yet, then I then I won't. <laughs> so um, I'm still not completely mature. So some of my answers aren't getting answered, but. <laughs> Anyway, it cracks me up. Uh, um, yeah, so, and then when I got my answer, I was like, oh my gosh, now I'm seeing how the script is written so that when you're ready to surrender and be mature enough to get an answer, the script is run in a way that it's given you the um, the the symbols or the concepts or you know the thing that your mind needs to get it. Like it gives it to you. So the script is being built somehow. I don't know knowing what the question is going to be, and so it builds into it what you need to be able to when you've surrendered to that question, get the answer. And so I looked back and I was like, oh, okay, well. I came from a programming background, so I understood programming pretty well. We did object-oriented programming back then, which is um, an understanding of that um, was helpful for understanding what I'm going to say in a little bit. But so um, I don't want to bore you all with this, but it might be important. So object-oriented programming really simplistically is like... Um, you have a catalog of all the objects that you can put into your program. And um, like, for instance, an object would be a car. And so that's in the catalog that you can pick from. I'm going to pick a car out and put it in my program. And then I can choose stuff about that, that car, like, oh, it's got two doors or three doors or five doors. or, And so the objects... Um, or in the catalog, you pick out what you want and you can modify different things in it so that there's a lot of variety that an object can have. And so knowing about objects and how they can have all this variety. Um, later on, after being a programmer, maybe even while I still was, I don't remember, but I ran across a book um, that's uh, called a search in um, see a search in secret India, and it was I don't know. Sorry. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I was pointed to that by someone at um, Aham who um, was is a heal a spiritual healer. She's she knows the truth of what she is, and she keeps she'll bring you back to it if you've forgotten. So I asked her for what book suggestions and she had and she sent me to that book and it was it's a really nice book but inside that book is a place about astrology he went and visited an astrologer and the cool thing about this astrologer is he he said you know i threw out my chart a long time ago he said i don't use astronomy for my own chart because i know it's written there's nothing for me to gain from knowing the future because i know it's written and I was like, wow, that is really cool to be able to, you know, help other people with their chart because they don't know yet that it's written. And some, and this can help them in their healing process. But yet for him, he didn't need his chart at all because it's been written. So I thought that was way cool about that book. And I didn't realize it at the time why I thought it was way, way cool, but it always stuck in my head. So I've got, you know, Regina's teaching, you know, coming back to me and this thing about astrology coming up and the catalog of objects that you can put in a program. <laughs> and so the answer that I got when I, you know, finally surrendered enough to get an answer and, you know, the Holy Spirit, the truth of what we are, uses what it has to communicate with us. And so I had tools that were built into my script so that I would have a way to understand what I was being communicated about. So, um, and what I understood was that the catalog of um, all these scripts is written in astrology and all the stars and all the positioning that they go through. And there's 12, you know, there's 12 um, main kind of, um, like, say there's a car. And then there's um, 
cars with one through 12 doors. Those are the only ones that there are. So those are the scripts. There's 12 major scripts, but then there's tweaking that can be done on a car with two doors, right? You can change the hood, you can change the hubcaps, you can change. And so that's what all the interaction of the planets are doing. And it made sense to me that, you know, chaos theory looks like it's like, you know, there's no order to it, but there's like ah, godly, beautiful order behind it. And if, if, you know, the truth of what we are wanted to do something, and I don't know what yet, but give us these scripts it would have to have a divine way to hand out scripts. And so handing out the scripts is the what the planets are doing for us. As someone's born, they're handed the script. And the script has all these nuances to it that no script ever repeats. And so what I found then was a book by um, Jan Spiller. It's Astrology of the Soul for the Soul. And she's a Course in Miracles student. And so she looks at it not like you're trying to predict the future, but she's looking at it. This is what your script is. And if you can recognize your script and not get tricked into believing you are the script, but if you can recognize your script, you don't have to be at the effect of your script. And so this book helps you to see your script. And, you know, I, I, I give it to <laughs> give it to people and they open it up to their, you know, their their car door number and they're like this isn't me i'm not like that and i'm like yeah did you learn anything from what you just did <laughs> is there a lot of judgment going on there i think we might have something we could look at there right you know i'm being identified with the script and i'm telling you that's not my script because i know my script <laughs> i know who i am <laughs> so i i use it I use it, I go through it, and I just look at what different scripts look like so that when I'm out and about and I start to get sucked into believing a script, I go, oh, wait a minute, I remember that script. That was object number 469. I could have picked it and put it in any place I wanted. So I don't know if that made any sense to anybody but me, but um, there you go. We're getting requests for... The name of the book, I, I know it's Jane Spillar. Is it Astrology for the Soul? Jane yeah. Spiller, Astrology for the Soul. Yeah. Spiller. And, you know, I go through and read other, um, you know, car, like my car door might be three. And I go through and I'll read like um, sevens and I'll go, wow, yeah. I can see this script playing out in my script too. You know, there's there's so much... I mean, it's so intricate. I don't, it's just, it's really beneficial to just go, oh yeah, that's just a script. It's not the truth of what I am. I don't have to be the effect of it. I can let it be there just as it is. And I can return back to the truth of what I am. Who am I? Oh yeah, I remember who I am. Okay. <laughs> and it sounds like a tool, you know, just like all of these, a tool to, where we can potentially reduce the contrast experience, where if we if we kind of know what's what our response might be, that you know we can choose again, and then yes, not have to feel as much pain, energy pain, or mind pain, uh, or believe we're the the resistance that we're ultimately we're not, but we identify with it. Excellent. Yes. No more suffering, right? We. We don't have to suffer. Exactly. And that's what they always say. And, you know, <laughs> unless we're not talking to beings who hear that themselves, it's not, it's not always a easily accepted, you know, but it's like, okay, you know, what is this? What is this, uh, this suffering experience and how can it be used as an opportunity um, rather than, than suppressed again? Uh, gorgeous. Um, I had a question and it kind of went out because I'm listening so closely to what you're you're sharing. Um, so, might you share maybe a belief that you saw that you were pretty attached to, and you've already shared a little bit, been incredibly honest about you know that 
Karen objected to, you know, our, like holistic meditation and then Vipassana and, you know, the, the discipline. Uh, but uh, is there, I shouldn't read the chat board because then I get distracted. Uh, is there anything that, that really felt like it was kind of dug in like a tick? And then when the opening, you know, just like I'm the honesty, I'm going to look at this and the honesty frees us from the intent the intensity of the energy of resistance that really fell away and was tremendously obvious when it fell away. Mm. Um, I can share with you um, an, ex an experience I had. Um, it was um, in the middle of 2018 um, I had got, I had, you know, I had realized already that Karen didn't exist. It was just a bunch of concepts and, um, but I got, I got tricked and I was tricked. Like I, I knew I, it was like horrible because not having had felt being tricked for, you know, a couple months. Now I got really tricked bad <laughs> and I, um, do you guys remember a gentleman? He, okay, it was the one this that Korean company country that um, might be communist. It's like North Korea or South Korea. One of them, the bad one, <laughs> the one that doesn't um, give freedoms. They had taken a young man because he did something against you know what they thought he should do. I think it was from Germany. His name was Otto. And they held Otto and they wouldn't release Otto until finally they released Otto. And um, a couple of days after he got home, he passed away. He just too much brain damage. Um, but when, and, and they, we were hearing about Otto in the news, how they weren't letting him go. And he was in the, in their jail system. And, um, and I got identified with, um, with making it real, I went through my mind and I went to each of the people involved and I, I thought I was doing forgiveness work. Um, so I would go, I would first, I went to like, okay, you know, auto's in there and um, I forgive all the captors and everything. It's just, you know, what's going on for auto and then I'd go to the mom and I'd feel the mom and I'd feel how she was, you know, so upset with what was going on. And I would, I would try to forgive for her, you know, all the people involved, but I would feel the hurt and the pain and the suffering. And then I would go to the captors and I would put myself in their feet and I would, you know, feel how, you know, they were just doing their job and, you know, how I could forgive them for what they were doing. But what I ended up doing, going through all the people, um, is I ended up getting sucked into this suffering and into this making it real. I had taken something that um, was happening in the script that was all in my imagination. Everything that I just told you was all in my imagination. You know, I imagined how people felt and I imagined what people did and it was all imagination and I get sucked into that because I think it was, I don't know, I'm going to call it like a, the spiritual ego was trying to emerge and say, you know, this is some, some, this is the forgiving work we need to do. You need to do this forgiving work and you need to use your imagination to go through all this. And what I ended up doing was making it real, which it wasn't. And suffering, and I couldn't get out of it. I got stuck there. And so I contacted um, a spiritual healer at, um, you know, someone who knows the truth of who they are. And when um, when you stray from that truth, they're going to bring you back to the truth. And so I went to a spiritual healer from a home, and they helped me to see that I was making it all real. And none of it was. It was just all in my, you know, the mind's imagination. And that this, and that's how I learned about the spiritual ego. And so I'm very um, attentive to 
if that ever comes back up, you know, like I can see sometimes the mind wants to start playing tricks with about, you know, oh, there's some forgiveness work that needs done here. And, you know, oh, that's so spiritual sounding. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not going there today. <laughs> but I'm not saying that I don't I don't have to forgive a script because I understand it's just a script. It's not the truth of who we are. It's not the truth about who is behind, you know. I mean, the script is just going on and the truth of what we are, we are all this. It's all me. It's all me. It's all the same. I'm every character. The same awareness that's seeing it from these eyes is seeing it from everybody else's eyes. So I really have no forgiveness to do but to allow the script, not get sucked into it, not suffer for, for it, and just realize that I love the truth of what I am in every aspect that it seems to be showing up in this dream world. So I think that was a pretty good letting go of... Uh, and when I finally figured it out, oh my gosh, it was like going from being um, tortured to being, you know, held in the embrace of love forever. Yeah. Oh, wait, you're on mute. Thank you for sharing that story. Um, I've been working with the... Uh, the lack belief, you know, in, in feeling like there's an other that's been, um, you know, oppressed by an other and um, working with that very deeply with Jesus. And today I was out walking and I heard the phrase lack attack. Mm -hmm. And so so the, the error was seeing that there wasn't wholeness to begin with. And my brother, who I was seeing as a victim who then needed, quote unquote, my, you know, wanting to help them, not that we don't in the world, you know, help and that sort of thing, but but the way the mind was seeing it is it wasn't seeing the wholeness and um, and then just seeing that that's actually an attack on, um, on our wholeness. And it's so interesting because every time that I, you know, I work with Jesus, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like he just sees it. It's like, that is, incredible it's so clear but it's also not clear to the mind that is misinterpreting you know that is seeing believing its interpretations believing its perceptions its sensory experience all of that so so i think it's a big one so so that's beautiful having yeah. shared that, sure and just having shared that what would your response be to that with the you know the belief that it's possible for a brother to be lacking or oppressed. So there's actually a hidden desire to experience that feeling. And I'm the one who's suffering because I'm believing all of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would say, who am I? Who am I really? Can I be in lack? Yeah. So, it, it, and I know with words, we always say, because when we experience it, there's like, yep, there's no way to put in words, but can you in some, some way just try to share a little bit about that direct experience? Like, oh my God, <laughs> like that, that, I am that, you know? <laughs> I am that, yeah. I love the teaching that um, A. Ramana does. He's the um, founder of um, Aham. And he talks about um, when Moses is on, I guess he's Moses is on a mountain. He sees in the burning bush and he realizes Moses had, comes to the realization then. He says, you know, I am that I am. And and that it, that is it. That's that explosive moment when you realize I am that I am is the same thing that Moses saw. And it's the same I am. And that was what? Supposedly hundreds and I don't know, years ago, <laughs> if time exists. But it's the same thing. And it's that same explosive. I mean, it, it just, yeah, you just know you are I am. Right? I mean, Wow. <laughs> And the peace behind it. And Karen doesn't exist. 
and more doesn't exist. <laughs> Nobody exists. I am that I am. Yeah. And and first for anyone that that might scare that like saying Karen doesn't exist or Laura doesn't exist or that um, even within that the the divine can hold all of that the experience that still seems to be uh, a personified experience um, and the worthiness and, and it's just a relaxation how would you comfort someone who was like who might have heard that <laughs> and just was like I don't know what to do with that and, and it's like yeah well, what's behind that, you know, that identity of Karen and Laura, right, is that existence that is forever, never ending, doesn't have a beginning or an end. It has no sorrow. It has no need. It has no lack. The truth of what, I, what we are is complete. It's plentiful. I mean, it's even beyond plentiful. And so to lose, to lose I don't even know how to say, to lose like a choking mechanism around your beingness. To fear losing that, I can understand that because I, I feared it for a long time, losing it until I could surrender into it. Yeah, but it's it's worth losing. It's freeing, it's liberation. It's like, it's like a whole new world. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what we truly are does exist. It's just that what we think we are doesn't exist. It's my experience. Like there hasn't been a disappearance of anything except illusion. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, Would you like to do a meditation? Let's do it. And then yeah. let's have some questions from people. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to... Um, Try to stay with the step-by-step um, -step self inquiry process that I learned with the hum. And um, it's going to stop at, at a place. Uh, oh, I don't know if it'll stop or not. We'll see. I don't know what's going to happen. Who knows? Let's just close our eyes and get quiet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to get quiet in my seat. And just sinking into the stillness of the seat. And the mind may still be active. So I'm just going to merge with the seat and borrow the stillness that's there, the stillness we share, and let it anchor me. And comforting the mind if it needs it, that only for the next few moments we ask it to rest. And there's no place to go in this moment. There's nothing to do. Nothing to fix.
Just allowing the mind to relax. No fight or flight needed. Just feel the relaxation of that. No fight or flight needed. No identity to protect. or build up. As if everything is complete, finished, what does that feel like? Allowing the mind to rest in that. And now just being aware, where is my attention? Telling the truth about it, being honest. What am I experiencing right now? Maybe there's some sensations, body sensations, sounds, feelings in the body. Just noticing, not making any stories about it, judging it, just noticing and allowing it. Maybe there's some emotions Just noticing. Not judging. Not explaining. Just curious, just looking. And maybe there's thoughts. Just allow them to be there, but don't get drawn into them. Allow it all to be there just as it is. Notice that they're over there, and you're the one observing.
Who's experiencing this? Who's thinking? Who is aware of all this? I am. I am. I Who am I? Feeling I am. existence relaxing into I am existence I'm not the body, and I'm not the emotions, and I'm not the feelings, then what am I? What exists? I know I am. Feeling I am until there is no longer a feeling of I feeling I am.
inner peace, inner silence. And this. I, I, I. Absorbed into that heart cave. Releasing and relaxing, just being. Thank you for being with me. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, Karen. Beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. So let's open it up and see if anyone has questions for Karen. Uh, ideally, if you could raise your electronic hand, but we'll do our best to keep an eye out for physically raised hands. All right, Shauna, please. Marisol is before me. You want to go first, Marisol? Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Joy and Karen. I can't talk real well right now. <laughs> the meditation was so good. But one question I wanted to ask you was, it seems like you go out into nature quite a bit. So how important is that for you for deepening into the realization? 
Um, I like it. Um, I've been playing around with it lately. Um, the idea of, you know, borrowing the stillness from the objects and then um, merging into them. Um, and that first started with the trees and the leaves. So, yeah. Um, it's important, but it it's not necessary. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, <laughs> but it's not necessary. Yeah. And I sprained my ankle lately, so I haven't been able to go out for a couple of weeks. So um, I think that's part of how I can answer that it's not necessary because it, I found that it's not. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Karen. Oh, just... And the other thing that was was um, I was playing around with was I was um, playing with the pixels of the script and the dream. And as you walk past objects like trees, I was just playing with the pixels as they come and go and just noticing that, you know, it's just part of the it's just another part of the script. Yeah. Very cool. I'll play with that. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. Karen, Marisol, sorry, I, I took the first hand I saw on the left side of my screen, so please. No worries. Um, thank you so much, Karen, and thank you, Joy. Um, this has been wonderful. Um, I love your meditations. They're, they're just super helpful, so that was great. Um, I wanted to ask you about Holosync. So I don't know if you talked about it in the beginning, um, I, I missed the first 10 minutes, um, but that I was like, oh my goodness, someone else. I had never heard anyone else do Holosync. Um, I did that early on and I really feel like it like helped kind of like propel me into this path. And um, I, I'm going to look for my old CDs. <laughs> Uh, so I wanted to know if you're still using that um, or if that was just something early on that really helped you. That is so cool that you you know about it because you're right. Very few people know about it. <laughs> and um, I was telling Laura um, the other day when I was talking to her about how when I went to be ordained, um, it was in um, Colorado and they had, um, what was his name? Brent Haskell come um, and he he's written books, I think. And he used to teach. I think he taught in the sanctuary for a while. But um, anyways, he was just coming up with the idea of doing, um, you know, the subconscious mind stuff. And he was starting to research it. And we were I told him about the center, you know, Polo Sink. And he was really excited about it. Um, but I, I, you know, something weird happened with me. And I. Um, my dog was having seizures and I didn't know if it had anything to do with the holosync. I was using headsets, but she was having seizures. And I thought, well, I'm going to stop doing that. See if it changes anything. Um, it didn't, but then I, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get back to it until recently. They've got a new app on the phone and I thought, wow, you know, I never finished all the levels. I think I'm on purification um, level four, which is kind of in the middle of it. And I thought, well, I might, I might check it out and do it again. And so I'm waiting for my disc to be made again so I could download it because now they download them. You don't get them on CDs. So um, that was that was new <laughs> technology. <laughs> so but it puts you in a very deep meditative state because it takes you through the um, what is it? Beta, alpha, theta. And so it's like it puts you into that Zen mode that, you know, the Zen monks supposedly get into and and you get to be in there and just rest because your mom my mind rests when it gets there so um yeah i'm looking forward to starting it again see how it feels me too <laughs> <laughs> look for those cds and try it again cool yeah bring that up again thank you thanks yeah Perfect. <laughs> 
Um, I don't see any other hands, so please do raise hands if any questions come up. I, I have another one. Oh, Tanya, Anya, please. Uh, hi, Karen. Hey. Uh, uh, you mentioned Holosynchronite. I, I did it so many years ago. <laughs> I did like four, three, three, four levels of that. Uh, and I, I love doing that. And I totally forgot. Totally forgot. It's just first time you mentioned and I remembered. But what I wanted to tell you is that in second year of... Uh, gentle healing, we were supposed to do those um, sorts of awakening uh, and uh, you did these meditations and I for three months I was resisting to listen to your meditation completely. I, I thought, okay, I did my meditation, I did this, that, and uh, then I started to do your meditations. And I can't stop it. I'm at the end of year three. I'm doing it every single day. Like I shorten them a little bit because I just decided to take off, like pause when you are not speaking. So it will be half an hour. So I have my favorite half an hour. It's about 20 of them. And I put them in, a, in this uh, music. And I run it and run it and run sometimes several hours during the day, doing things, meditating, and then just listening. And it's amazing. I don't know. I I don't I think it's my favorite meditation for now. I I just appreciate it amazingly. Wow. Yeah. I'm so grateful. It's helpful. Nice. Yes, it is very helpful. It's uh, some meditations I hear I hear for a few times, maybe a lot of times, and then I forgot about them. I don't return back, but those I never never stopped. Uh, it's it just continues. <laughs> very very good one. Yeah, I even wrote down the my fa my favorite numbers. What the what are they? I'll write them down. Okay. So one of the most favorite is sitting on my, uh, um, it's, uh, uh, where is it? A second. <clears throat> Those three meditations, first of all, medita yes, meditation, which you um, did by book of um, Elizabeth, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about those. Yeah, and it's 154, 155, 156. Those are just, I start one and I continue, continue, continue. But uh, it's it's a quote from Regina book, 154, 155, 156. I have also 138, 142, 150. 158, 175, 177. I could put it on a chart for you. If you want. Wow. <laughs> 179, 197, 259. So those are like I put exclamation sync uh, mm -hmm. uh, on my music file. So and I keep placing them up one after another. So yeah, those are the thoughts of awakening, right? Yeah, those are beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I love those thoughts that Regina gave us. Wow. I can see why you're why you're listening to them over and over again because they're so powerful and beautiful. Yeah, I just cool. Oh, I, I made a mistake in the road. And it's okay. So, <laughs> so <laughs> cool. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah. Very, very helpful. Very. Thank uh, you. You're welcome. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Thanks for putting them in the uh, in the chat as well, Tanya. Um, so, this as as we were doing the meditation, um, another way to phrase the direct experience for me was like, uh, "I, I am is that," and it it was just striking and that we're already perfect and whole, that we are that. And 
what is your, um, did it feel like a rediscovery or something new? Uh, share just, I feel like I just want to say to you again, just share on your experience, whatever, whatever comes in or something I might not have asked you that, that, that would be really helpful for us to hear. Um, yeah, so when the mind finally surrendered, I was uh, standing on the road out in a, in a campground. I had been walking and I just stopped and, um, I, you know, I went away for a, a little bit. Like I just went so inside that I didn't even know anything about outside while this was happening. And then when I looked out, um, there was no sky. It was like I was the field in front of me was just floating. Like there was no no construct around. <laughs> it was weird. There was no construct, and this field was just floating there. And I didn't know what to do. I um, I was just stunned for quite a while. I didn't know what to do. I just walked back towards the campground, and um, I saw a building, and I went in it, and I used the bathroom, and you know, I was like, "What do I do now?" And I walked back to the camper, and I just sat there on the bed, and um, my husband was um, he was out at. A friend's he was going to be gone for a couple of days so I was there with the dogs and I just I just sat there on the bed and didn't know what to do I was just without any construct at all I was like and me and the dogs just sat there for I don't, for a long time <laughs> it was like everything was different and there was no fear or anything it was just I just didn't know I just didn't have any clue <laughs> I was just happy just sitting there <laughs> and it took me a little while to learn how to use the grocery store again I went back when I got home I had to go to the grocery store and I, I just I had forgot how to use the grocery store and um a lady came up to me and asked me if I she could help me <laughs> I was like oh no I'd say she helped me use the grocery store <laughs> But since then, I've acclimated very well. <laughs> Is it an experience now more of being moved? Or would you feel like the choice maker shifted? Or, you know, that it just some people call it following guidance. Um, how would you phrase how activity or movement occurs uh, since the shift or the recognition? No, whatever comes into awareness, I, I just deal with whatever's in awareness. Like, I don't, I don't really do a lot of planning. I've noticed that, you know, whatever you plan doesn't come true anyway, so why bother? <laughs> yeah. Um, although I am doing a, um, a service for Awakening Together, and the, it has gotten me on my computer, and I have been doing some tasks, so, um, but I only do them when they show up in my mailbox. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm a very good um, service person, but I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> Gorgeous. I see Rhoda, you have your hand up, please. Thank you, Joy. Karen, I am curious because I keep watching mine get stuck on this idea of awakening. And um, for me, it feels like all of the movement is very subtle. There's no like sudden, like you just described, like that hasn't happened here. Like there's no like sudden, oh my God, I don't know who I am or where I am or, and you know, what sounds like no fear around that either, but there's like these very subtle glimpses, you know, like the subtle seeing that 
how the movement of attention creates this sense that of of an eye that is separate and imagined like seeing how i'm free to imagine for as long as i choose to imagine but none of these big like big shifts that i hear folks talk about and as i was sitting in your meditation just now I watched again the subtle movement, you know, as attention moved, this kind of sense that there's an eye separate from what is kind of subtly comes into play. But what I notice is true here is that that that's kind of like the living experience. Like that's, that's how life is. This eye feels very live. And I'm not talking about the I, I, I'm talking about the I, Rhoda, feels very alive and very imagined, but very real at the same time. So I'm just curious about, you were speaking about AHAM and the, and the self-inquiry method that they took you through, which was this really direct experience. And... um. How is that different from some of the practices that you had come across before that particular point in time? Because something in here says I'm Rhoda must be missing something. That's how that's how I felt when I was listening to Rupert's meditation. And he's like, you know, saying all these words, and I'm like, I'm not getting something here. Yeah, that's how I was feeling. Um The ISIT program, it is very experiential. And and there was times when, you know, all of us cried. Like, there's a place where you look at roles and responsibilities, and um, it's earth-shattering <laughs> to, um, to look at that. Um, so knowing the knowing going through that program, which was really intense, and it was just focused on the one thing, right? The who am I? Um, and the, it, they've, they've got different techniques that are, you know, play into that. But it really is all about that. I, who am I? And, and getting the mind to surrender into it and let go of that. I, I know it. So what am I missing is kind of like the mind is still maybe not surrendered enough i don't know but as soon as your mind surrenders completely to it you'll get it it's like it just has to lose that last little tiny bit that it's hanging on to whatever it is and the idea of just like you said you you watch it and you're seeing it and maybe um i don't know if the you know i don't know what works for everybody i know what works for me but um you know watching the watching what's happening and going well that's just a script that's just a script that's being played out by this character, <clears throat> you know, Rhoda. It's not me. And to, to, can you see and detach from and not be at the effect of? Yes. Yeah. But again, it feels more like, I mean, relative to what I hear described, and I hear what you're saying, there probably hasn't been full surrender by the mind at this point but it feels more like glimpses relative to what I just heard you describe. The, um, I was just looking at the one of the lines I, I read at the end, I think, of the meditation. Now, um, listen to this. Let's, let's just, everybody, if you don't mind, let's all just close our eyes and listen to this. And let's just be here together in this space. Um, the trueness, the true truth of what we are, the same... Um, awareness it's all the same awareness there's no two awarenesses it's not my awareness and your awareness it's simply just awareness and then feel feeling i am this existence that i am not the concepts about what i am but just the existence that i am only that feeling that until there's no longer a feeling of an I feeling the existence.
Can you feel the surrendering into existence? Any concepts or thoughts that pop up are just the mind. It doesn't exist. It's just a thought. And what exists is that which is aware of it. That awareness is the same as existence. And I, I talked a little bit about the completion, but isn't it also just existence that's left when when we when we say, well, what if this, you know, whatever it is, what if Karen, you know, is completely done and over? How does it feel when that's completely done and over? And you can use it with any situation that's bothering you at any time. And feel how when it is complete and over, that all that exists, that's all that's left is this existence, this place of inner peace. Excuse me. Is that help, helpful? <clears throat> Thank you for slowing it down. There's another exercise that they did that um, I really loved it. Um, do we have time to go through just one, one more little thing? Oh, we got four oh, minutes, God. plenty of time. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we're just going to close our eyes and I'm going to ask you to use your imagination just a little bit here. But um, let's close our eyes and let's um, picture ourselves going into a house and we're going there for a big party. And well, it doesn't even matter what we're going there for, but we go down the hallway and there's a room to the right and we're going to put our coat in there. That's where all the coats are. And so we go into the room, we take off our coat, we put it on the bed and um, we had shut the door behind us. And for some reason, the light goes out. And so it's pitch black in there right now. And so you can't see your body. And somebody yells in through the door, hey, is my coat in there? And you're like, well, I don't know. I can't see, so I don't know. <laughs> and then they ask you, are you in there? And you say, yes, I'm in here. How do you know you're in there? Isn't it that knowing of existence that is you, knowing you're there? How do you know you're there? Mm. Okay. We still got two minutes. Hopefully that was helpful, Rhonda. Rhoda, sorry. Quite all right. I <laughs> loved that particular exercise. I've heard you do it on your meditations too. I use it all the time to just center myself. Thank you. 
Yeah, that's one of my favorite. I don't know why, but I love that one. <laughs> yeah, me too. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Laura. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. So we've got, uh, I think, one minute and counting. And just want to thank you profoundly, Karen, for, for being willing and taking the time to be here with us and also to let people know how to reach you. And I think, Sina, you've probably already posted them maybe even more than once, um, but any links if people want to reach out to Karen or any of the resources that she shared tonight, uh, that would be great. So, Karen, do you have any last, last things to share before we sign off for the evening? No, I'm just so grateful, Laura, that um, your interview is beautiful. You're such a lovely spirit. Wow. It's fun to be um, with you and everybody here. I'm just so grateful for all of you. I mean, you don't know how much you support me. <laughs> so I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in and who may listen to this in the future. So mm, blessings beyond measure. Mm. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you for watching our satsang. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to join us live, please remember you can do so by visiting our website, awakening-together.org. We'd love to see you in the sanctuary. Again, our website is awakening-together.org. Remember to click the bell for more notifications and subscribe.